hidden cameras, 15 minute cities. These are all watchwords of a new rising philosophy of city planning and governance, which I would describe as a kind of social engineering or technocratic approach, which views citizens as pawns or as children who need to be herded and shepherded here, this way and that, um, in accordance with a master plan that is thought up by clever rulers, by clever social engineers, um, by clever city councillors. And um, the amount of hubris that is reflected in this approach is enormous because the problem with this social engineering approach is that these people really do think that they know best for us and they really think that they can put in place road blockades, um, you know, uh, very complicated traffic rules, uh, emission targets that are rigorously enforced um, upon um, older vehicles and so forth with very little popular consultation, with very little consultation of citizens and their needs, their real needs. So if you make a neighborhood, if you fill it with speed traps and with emission targets and with who knows blockades and so on, you make it an unattractive place to go. And so local businesses suffer. This is just one example of the, the, the knock-on effects of these technocratic approaches. So we need to, we need a renewal of local democracy, basically of local civic life so that citizens can really become aware of these issues and hold their local councillors um, accountable for these absurd decisions. What's the alternative to a top-down kind of approach to city planning? Um, let's just take the example of the 15-minute city. Well, uh, of course, it's, it's a nice idea that you'd have amenities, whether cultural, recreational, or educational, all in the same neighborhood. And so the citizens are incentivized to hang out in that neighborhood um, and to spend more time locally walking and less time in the car. Well, fair enough. Well, then think about ways you can invest in the neighborhood. Think about ways you can make it more attractive for citizens to hang out in their neighborhood, by all means. And you can be creative and you can really consult citizens and get their feedback on this. Um, but that's very, very different to just abruptly putting in place blockades, making the neighborhood inaccessible, uh, making it difficult for other cars to get into the neighborhood, creating a hugely adversarial relationship with citizens by essentially putting in place a whole lot of traps because they didn't know uh, some complicated rule or they turned down the wrong street uh, when they were driving. Uh, can we get beyond the highly adversarial and technocratic approach? And can we actually think creatively about how to engage with citizens and how to improve the vibrancy of neighborhoods? make them more open places, make them more attractive places to spend time in. Um, I think it's a lack of imagination, essentially, and also a kind of prideful, uh, a kind of hubris that is driving these social engineering approaches to city planning. Um, the idea that what well, we know best and that there is this special class of people who, because of their background and training, they can decide for everybody else what's best for them and how they should live. It's totally self-defeating in the end because it just riles up citizens, turns them against uh, the whole notion of a 15 minute sort of city. Uh, it becomes unattractive to citizens when they see it as a tyrannical imposition. So can we just all calm down a little bit? And when I say all, I really mean the people who are advocating these top-down measures and take a step back and consider how they might actually talk to citizens, engage with them, and um, find out what their real needs are on the ground to improve city life, to improve local neighborhoods, uh, instead of just dreaming up some utopian or probably dystopian plan and then imposing it on people willy-nilly.